you doing, everybody? Welcome to the big show. It's Bruce here, traveling with Bruce on the TWB channel on YouTube. Uh, welcome to the big show for May the 31st, 2021, the last day of May. Wow, we uh, hope you're doing okay out there. And to my American friends, happy uh, Memorial Day. Cheers to all of you and all of you out there who serve. Thank you for your service to your country. Hope you're doing great today. It's a gorgeous day here. Here in Creston, British Columbia. Man, we are loving it. We've got uh, 80 degrees for the high today pretty well. It's still gorgeous and sunny out. It's 5 o'clock here at our time, and we're at the high temperature of the day right now. We won't set. Our sun won't set now till uh, tonight until uh, I believe it is 841 sunset tonight before our sun goes down. And uh, uh, we're going to be in the, uh, you know, 81 right now, or we're going to be in the 60s all night long here, high 50s, so way in the first thing in the morning. Tomorrow, um, uh, or, or yeah, tomorrow's high, 86 here, 91 on Wednesday, 91 on Thursday, 82 on Friday, Saturday, 68, then Sunday, 63. <laughs> Rain. <laughs> but we'll take what we have right now. We'll go with it and we'll enjoy it. I hope you're having a good day where you are. I hope you had a good weekend where you are. If you're in the U.S., those of you around the rest of the world, I hope you're doing all right today. Taking care of yourselves, staying healthy. Hope you're getting your second shots or getting your first shot, your second shot. Hope that everything is good with you and your family. Nice to have you here. Please say hi to me. Um, we were talking. I was just on the air for the last hour with my sponsor members because every Monday night at 7 o'clock we do a one hour show it's a hangout show with yours truly and uh, members of this channel we just talk about whatever we want to talk about it's just whatever you want and it's a real easy casual hour just again, hanging out every week comparing notes we get the same we do the get together on fridays as well at seven o'clock eastern time again for sponsor members only and then we do live trivia every friday night so if you're not a member uh, become one now and I think it's 10 bucks a month and you can you can join in. I give you two live shows every week just for sponsor members on this channel. And uh, that's eight a month. That's $1.25 a show. I mean, how good is that? Uh, we play trivia every Friday night. Anyway, one of the topics that came up, one of the discussion points came up, I'm going to ask you guys. We're going to continue this conversation. Those of you who've been on a cruise before, that if you've been on a cruise before or two, 10 or 20, whatever number it is, I've got a skill testing question for you. You tell me the worst weather you've ever been on a ship before. What, what's the worst storm you've ever been on on a cruise ship? And uh, what was it like? Describe it to us. Can you tell me what year it was? Where where did it happen? What kind of cruise were you on? What ship were you on? Do you remember the name of the ship? Tell us horror stories. The, the worst weather you've ever experienced on a cruise ship. I'll tell you my story. It was Bayonne, New Jersey. We left Bayon, my wife and I, we were on the Explorer of the Seas, a huge ship for the Royal Caribbean, over a thousand feet long, 150 feet wide. Uh, we had an inside room and uh, we left Bayon, New Jersey on a gorgeous, gorgeous day. It was in March, uh, unfortunately. The year, I'm trying to remember, well, it might have been 2013 or 14, something like that. Yeah, 13 or 14, and uh, probably 13. And we were headed down, we were heading from Bayonne, New Jersey, down to uh, Labadee, and then we were going to San Juan, Puerto Rico, and to uh, uh, San Martin. Uh, and uh, anyway, uh, that was the plan. Well, nice, nice cruise. It was supposed to be a nine day cruise, I think it was nine or 10. Days. Anyway, we left Bayonne, New Jersey uh, at three, four in the afternoon. It was gorgeous. The water was as flat as glass. And we were taking photos of, of Manhattan with the reflection off the New York Harbor. Phenomenal. Under the uh, the bridge, the Staten Island, the bridge that goes over Staten Island, the Verrazano Bridge, and it was fantastic. And we were we were going out. But the captain came on and said, folks, welcome to the Explorer of the Seas. Uh, you know, we hope you have a really good time. We want to let you know that there is a winter storm that is coming north and it is heading for New York and heading for Boston. Um, and we are going south. Um, and what we're going to do tonight is uh, 
we are going out at full speed as soon as we're out of these, uh, as soon as we're in international waters, we're going full speed, fast as the ship can go. And we are going to go as far south as possible before we get to it so that we get less of it because as it comes north, it'll get stronger. And we're going south as quick as we can. But it will be uh, wavy tonight, and we will update you uh, on the conditions. And uh, if necessary, we will close the, uh, the, uh, the outdoor decks off to the public to, to keep you safe. We'll just stand by for announcements. And hopefully we'll be able to get through it as quick as possible as we are going south at almost 30 miles an hour, like 24 knots, 25 knots. That's almost 30 miles an hour. We're going south. And it's coming north, and then it, we'll leave it behind. And when we come back to New York next week, this storm will have long gone, and there'll be snow left all over the place, but we won't we won't have experienced that. Oh, okay. So anyway, we go for dinner that night, and it's just fine. There's no problem. But around 10 at night, we're noticing it's a little just, you just you're, you're feeling little shudders. The, the ship is just kind of little, little jiggles as we are... The wind is coming up, and we're heading straight into it. Yeah, but, you know, this big ship, and it's got the stabilizers on. And we're fine. Uh, we're in bed by about 11 o'clock, Jen and I. We're in bed. We're asleep. And um, I wake up at about, oh, 8 in the morning, 7.30, 8 in the morning, I wake up. And I got to go to the bathroom. I, I got I to gotta do it number one. And I get up, and the, and the ship is doing this. I went, whoa, we're moving. And so I, I work my way on this inside room. I work my way to the bathroom. And I'm, I'm in, of course, a bathroom on an inside room is not very wide. And so you can literally stand there with your hands on both walls at the same time. So I got my hand on the one wall holding on to the shower curtain rod or something. And I'm hanging on to Mr. Johnson on the other hand, doing what I got to do. Um, I may have just sat down as well. I don't think I even tried to stand up with it. Got done what I needed to get done and washed my face a little bit. And then worked my way back to the bed, and I just laid back down again. And about an hour and a bit later, we we both were awake. Now it was about nine thirty, and the ship is the ships are rocking, and um, uh, not from the kind where you don't bother knocking. It's a rocket, and we hear noises. Oh my gosh, do we hear noises? And the noises we're hearing are waves that the ship is busting through, and um, and it, it and we can hear the the, the this sound of a wall of water hitting a wall of steel and uh, rippling all down the ship. We can hear this sound. Can't see it because we're inside the uh, cabin. The captain comes on and he's saying, good morning, folks. I'm going to be giving you hourly updates from now on. And we're now entering the, the teeth of the storm. You'll notice how the ship is moving about. Uh, we're going, uh, I think at that time we were going 20 knots and, um, uh, but it's going to be at least 12 hours of this, at least 12 hours of us fighting through this storm as it is working its way north and we're heading our way south. And um, uh, if we were stationary, uh, the storm would take two days to pass us. But because we're moving against it, we'll be through it in, in, in 18, 20 something hours. At least that was the prediction. Anyway, um, so, you know, please be wary that we have closed the pools. Uh, we have closed uh, outside uh, walkway areas. You can only move about in the ship, inside the ship. Fair. And I think they may have closed the elevators, but I can't be, be sure of that. Well, all right. So my wife and I thought, well, well, we'll go and try to, we'll head to the back of the ship for breakfast. We'll go to the buffet, see if we can get a bite to eat. And we left our cabin and we started walking down the hallway and it was, it was like this and like this and like this and like this. And you had no idea what was next because we couldn't see outside. We're in a hallway. And we could see people way down there and way up there. And they were walking along the hallway with their arms on each wall. We got to a lobby area and we figured what we would do is we would walk down to the, the flat boulevard. They had an indoor kind of a walkway area. That's that uh, that is an atrium when you can see three, four stories up on each side. And we thought we'd be lower and we'd be there, and then we would work our way towards the front. We got to the lobby area, and that's as far as I could go. I, I was overcome with seasickness, did not feel good, had to grab one of those bags, that, which were now conveniently available anywhere you can imagine. They were hanging off of stair rails, there were all these fresh uh, seasick bags anywhere you could within 10 feet. There was another bunch, another bunch. And I, I felt awful, so I said, I, I can't, I, I, can't, I didn't even have hunger. I, I was starving, but I couldn't eat a thing. 
We had eaten the night before anyway. Let's go back to the cabin. So we both went back, but neither of us wanted to eat. We went back to the cabin. And I had at the cabin, we had brought on board some cans of caffeine-free Diet Coke. And I thought, well, I'll just drink some of that. If I'm thirsty, I'll drink that. Otherwise, we have water. And, um, and uh, we went back to the cabin. And um, I laid down on the bed. And I found that if I laid on my left side, it was, it was tolerable. I wouldn't get ill. If I laid on my right side, I'd feel queasy. I don't know how that worked, but that's the way it was. And I had a can of cola sitting beside the bed, and it was there for 30 hours. And I had drank maybe two ounces of it. I couldn't even drink anything. It was just, I had no thirst, no hunger, no desire. And I was out of energy because I was just so wasted from all this energy being used to just try to hang on. Anyway, that whole day, we didn't get out of bed. And that night, we didn't get out of bed. We didn't have breakfast. We didn't have lunch. We didn't have dinner. And the next morning, we woke up at about 7 a.m., and we were starving. Um, and the ship had calmed down quite a bit. And we were listening to updates, updates, updates. And in the middle of the night, you know, the captain would come on and say, good news, folks. We're, you know, 80% through this storm. You're going to notice a substantial difference in the movement of the ship in the next few hours because we are really coming out of it. And the next morning, we were down to measly 20-foot waves from 80-foot waves, 100-foot waves. We're down to measly 20-foot waves. Uh, we walked down the hallway and eh, it was a bit tilty, but we didn't care. We felt fine. Uh, we were starving. We got to the back of the ship where the buffet was. And the strategy was we would just take a little of this and a little of that and just to slowly put food in our systems without feeling bloated. And that was the secret to success. And my secret to success, that first thing, was to find some tomato juice. I love tomato juice. If I'm not feeling well, tomato juice with some salt, lots of salt in it, mix it up salty glass of tomato juice sipping sipping it not gulping it sipping it little at a time letting it in there and let it work that those belly acids in there and there's tomato and all that the battle is on and then i'm having a, a little bit of yogurt and a little bit of uh, a little bit of this like i say just a, a little bit of bacon a little bit of scrambled egg and we ate maybe a third of a normal breakfast and coffee and then out for a walk on board the ship just to get some exercise and fresh air because we could go outside now. And about an hour and a half later, we went back and we ate a normal sized breakfast. We ate again. Now we were really hungry and we we're feeling great. And so the waves now were paltry. Uh, but the, unfortunately, the ship had to slow down to get through all this because if it had gone full speed, it would have really been bad. So it slipped, slipped behind schedule. And the captain came on and said, unfortunately, because of the schedule, we will not make it to Labadee in the morning like we were supposed to be at Labadee the, the second day or something like that, third day, whatever it was. So what we're going to do now is we're really slowing the ship down. We're going to slow it down even more so that the last of these waves, you won't even notice it because we're instead of going uh, you know, from 24 knots to 20 knots to eight, we're now going to go down to 12 knots. And we're just going to slow boat it all the way to San Juan, Puerto Rico, our second stop. And it's going to be a super smooth sailing. You'll have a great day today. The, 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 the temperature will warm up dramatically as the afternoon comes on because we're out of the storm. Tomorrow, it's going to be a glorious 80-degree day with calm seas. You'll enjoy all the amenities we have on board the ship. Enjoy yourself. And then the next morning, we'll be in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And that's how it went. And when we got to San Juan, it was the storm was a memory, but was on everybody's minds. That was my worst experience through the uh, through this uh, whole episode. On the way back from that cruise, the last full day at sea coming back, we went through some more 25-foot waves, but nothing. That was child's play. We were looking at, well, look, we're out there hanging over the railing, looking at these 25-foot waves going, children, nothing, nothing to worry about whatsoever. And ever since, I've been on a ship. 20, 25 foot waves, not a problem because we've been through 80 to 100 footers in 100 mile an hour winds, 80 miles going this way, 20 miles, the ship's going that way. We, we survived all that. But that was, that was my story of the worst cruise, uh, first cruise weather that I ever had. Love to hear yours. Let me know what you're thinking. Let's say hi to a few folks. There are 98 people here today. Thank you, 98 of you, for joining us on Memorial Day today. Hope you're doing all right. Let us know. Uh, if you like the show, give us a thumbs up if you could. That would help our channel's analytics, uh, and that would really help us with regard to being promoted by YouTube. 
So if you could give us a thumbs up today, that would be tremendous. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, welcome one and welcome all to the show. And uh, I hope you're doing all right. I'd love to know how many of you are, are giving us thumbs up. If anyone can tell us how we're doing for thumbs ups, that would be tremendous. All right, let's see who's here. Amicus, how do y'all? Gracious Memorial Day. Welcome, welcome. Edward, evening, Bruce and Jen. Charlotte is wonderful, peaceful, 77 degrees. Who could ask for more than that? Uh, Raman, hey, Bruce, I hope you had a restful day. See you tomorrow morning. Thank you, Raman. Uh, Ken, hi, Bruce and Jen and all from Janet and Ken in Saginaw, Michigan. We are back in Michigan after a week in Miami with visits to the Everglades and Key West. And uh, Jen, could you turn the fan on for me when you get a chance? Uh, Key West and uh, cruise ships kept cycling in and out for, we assume, was provisions and fuel probably right in Miami, getting the getting the crew vaccinated as well probably. MGM Family Travel. Hey, Bruce, how you doing, MGM? Uh, Sharon, hi, Bruce, long time no see. Welcome back. Kirk Brunson, welcome back, Kirk. Hi, Bruce, from the Big Apple. Hungry from all that food talk from the sponsor show. Oh, my, we talked food, too. Happy Memorial Day, everybody, from Antoinette. Welcome, Antoinette, to the show tonight, and I'm glad you're here, too. New new member of this channel. Rocky Grasso, also new member of this channel. Hi, Bruce, let's not talk about bad weather and throwing up again like we did on the sponsor show. Oh, that was me. Oh, that was you. Uh, Kevin Chapman, the author is here, the author extraordinaire. Welcome, Kevin, to the show. Uh, Memorial Day, greetings from central New Jersey. Nice, finally, 75 degrees here today. Beautiful weather. The snow might be gone. Um, Dober Mama, hi, everybody. Jeannie um, and, uh, and Bill are here from East Tennessee. Hi, you guys. Um, they're here from round two. We're here for round two. That's beautiful. Darlene Meyer is here. Hi, Darlene Meyer. Hi, hello, everybody from hot, hot 100 degree and still climbing Turlock, California. 100 degrees. Uh, uh, Nikki, uh, uh, hey, TWB family, greetings from Jacksonville. Thank you, all the sponsor members who are sticking around for the, the big show with all of you guys. Kevin Jackson is here. Hey, Bruce, how you doing, Kevin Jackson? Welcome. Kit Kat is here. Hi, Bruce. I'm in Massachusetts. High of 56 degrees today. We hope for warmer temperatures soon for you guys. Morel Levesque. Uh, hi, Bruce, and hi, TW family. Muriel, welcome. Uh, Terry Gallant. Um, Habs Leafs trying, uh, trying to uh, TK watching, trying to watch both right now. Yeah, it's, are they playing? They're playing. I don't know what's happening. We're waiting to see what the score is going to be and what's going on and who's doing what. And the last I heard, it was... Uh, 0-0, zero, zero, but it might be one nothing Montreal. I don't know. Uh, there are some dejected Maple Leafs looking on the bench right now, looking dejected and not happy with what's going on. Uh, we'll see. Uh, okay, uh, Fitzroy, bless up everyone from uh, Bruce. Hope you and your family are fine. Beautiful, beautiful weather in Grenada, in the Caribbean. Oh, that is beautiful. Fitzroy, I know you send the greetings every week. All the best to you and your family. Everyone at home. Yep, one nothing Montreal in the second period. 13 minutes to go. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Sharon, um, Cape Hatteras zone on the sea vault of adventure between New York City and Bermuda, approximately 1972, the worst weather. That was a small ship without the kind of stabilizers that we have today. It was really rocky ride back then. Terry uh, Habs leave trying to watch both shows. That's a tough choice here. Muriel, the wind, the west side on the escape leaving New York to Florida. March 2019, very scary. Uh, Sharon, the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. I ran over it during my New York City Marathon. Beautiful. Uh, Sylvan in the house. Sylvan Forrest. Hi, Mario, buddy. Hi, Bruce and all. The worst weather yet was North Carolina. Uh, was NC Norway, November 99. Um, that's interesting. Uh, that would have been something. Sandra, um, hello. Both, uh, both shots are done over a month ago for, for the virus. Way to go, Sandra. Book for August the 1st on 2021 on the Majestic Princess to Alaska. Getting excited already. Hoping you guys get your second dose real soon. Uh, Scott Weber. Hello, Bruce. Today is 59 degrees and cloudy in Palos Verdes. Gas is 4.12 a gallon. We're paying about 4.40 for gas converted to American. We're a little ahead of you here in Canada, in, in Creston, British Columbia. Anyway, Bullcraft Max. Hey, Bruce, how's it going? Such a rainy weekend. I was visiting the folks on Long Island. I missed you covering the market today. I didn't cover the market today. Thanks for everything that you do. Oh, you probably know I wasn't covering the market today. That's true. We'll be ready. We'll be doing it tomorrow. Bullcraft Mats. Also, do you have any scary cruise ship story? Would love to hear any of them. I just did one. Jeff, uh, me, Johnson. Uh, welcome. Uh, my Johnson. Uh, Nikki, worst weather at sea was a ferry crossing from Sherberg to Ireland in June 1980. My husband and two-year-old daughter 
We're sick as dogs. The fate of the non-sick me one is, is clean up. You got to clean up the mess. Oh, not fun. Oh, gosh. Lance, good day, Bruce from Sydney, Australia. It's 13 Celsius here this morning. Good morning, Lance, and welcome to the beginning of fall and winter. Uh, Sylvia's in the house. How you doing, Sylvia? Nice to see you today. Um, Nautical Nurse Nancy. Hello, TWB. Happy Monday night. Welcome, Nautical Nurse Nancy. So good to see you, too. It's been a while. Sylvan Forest, November 90 between Miami and St. Martin, 90 mile an hour winds, 23 foot waves uh, a day. We were a rocking, Gail and I. We were a rocking that day. Uh, Sylvia, I went through something like this on my honeymoon, October 1990, from New York City to Bermuda. I was so scared. MGM Family Channel. Hi there, Sylvia. MGM. Hello, Nautical Nurse Nancy. Uh, KJJ. Uh, hey, Jamie. What's up, Bruce? Jamie here from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Beer City, USA. What is the updated news on Alaska for this summer? Well, the story goes that the Congress, the Senate, the President all have cleared the bill to allow sailings from Seattle to Alaska and back without stopping in Canada. And it sounds like cruise lines are going to try to gear up for early July to start sailings from Seattle and perhaps all the way from uh, heading up to uh, Juno area and trying to do sailings from up there. Um, we don't know yet of the exact uh, final rulings on uh, capacity limits, uh, SC, uh, the CDC. We are hearing more and more about more relaxed uh, rules regarding onboard uh, requirements. We do know that vaccines are going to be necessary. Uh, you'll have to be proved, you'll have to prove you've had both shots. Um, and in Sia and of course, cruise will, the crew will have to absolutely be as well have their shots. Uh, but I don't know about testing prior to the cruise. I don't know what's happening there. Uh, we'll find out more in the next few weeks as we get closer here. Uh, Nautical Nurse Nancy, hello, Bill and Lucy, MGM Family Travel. John Anderson, hello, everybody. Nautical, hello, Bruce and TLB Family, Sylvan, uh, Sylvia, Sylvan, and everybody. Uh, Sylvia, I told my husband once we got to Bermuda, let's just fly back to New York. But we went back by the cruise, not so rocky, but it took me years to go back on a cruise ship. Jeff Danan, uh, Jeff, welcome. Good day, Bruce and TW family. First day of winter, maximum 12 Celsius here in Victoria in short, in short lockdown due to outbreak of the Indian variant of the virus in Australia. So we're down in lockdown again. I'll tell you, Australia has done a fantastic job to control that uh, virus down there. <clears throat> Phenomenal job to shut down the whole country. Amazing. Sylvia, nautical nurse Nancy. Hi there, nurse Nancy. Lance Ross, uh, have a great show, Bruce. I better get back to work. Lance, you take care. Sylvan, I loved it. I want to go again many times. That Gail, she is a trooper. Uh, Sylvia, MGM family travel. Hi there, MGM family. Nautical nurse Nancy, we're looking forward to Finley uh, meeting you, or finally meeting you uh, on the 3rd. It should be a great time. Sammy J, RIP Joe Rogan. Um, uh, SLG, Canadians won. Maple Leafs, nothing. That's true. Louise, uh, we've, uh, what what up? I'm not sure what that means, but hi, Louise. Uh, Sylvia, thumbs ups, everybody. Uh, we have 55 thumbs ups as of 516. So that was about eight minutes ago. We had uh, we had 55 thumbs ups. We're watching Toronto and Montreal. Can Toronto get a goal and tie this thing? It doesn't look like it. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Sharon, hi there. Jen, uh, can, uh, can winter Naples, Florida, uh, Lamar, uh, Lamar and D. Lisa from Barbados, welcome. Nautical Nurse Nancy, we've been blessed with lots of good weather on the seas. Sometimes it closes down the upper decks, but never too horrible. Uh, Rick uh, Killian, 101 something. Uh, Riverside County phone is it's off. It's hot, so it's 101 in Riverside. It's a hot one. Louise, uh, when cruising, it's a chance to enjoy many, enjoy many safe adventures. I love it. Andrew Cavity, hi, Bruce from Pittsburgh, California. It's 97 where we are. Sylvia, um, nautical nurse Nancy, lucky you. After that storm, I went through on my honeymoon from New York City to Bermuda. It took me many years to get back on the ship. January of 08, nine years. Louise, uh, did you know that my friend is a, is a teenager? His dad was a ship captain. We we skated. Wow, awesome stuff. Uh, Scott Weber, worst weather, August 2019, sailing through the Denmark Strait between Iceland and Greenland. That must have been something. Nautical Nurse Nancy, I think it's because we've mostly sailed on very large ships. Uh, Sylvia, perhaps that's why. Arc Adventures, happy Monday, Bruce and TW family. 73 here and very lovely. That would be St. Louis, Missouri. Andy and Andrea, welcome you guys to the show tonight from beautiful St. Louis. 
Sylvia, <clears throat> Neurotic Alerts, Nancy, bad storm was October 1990, and I will only cruise out of Florida now, too. That's it. Uh, uh, Sharon, uh, Nikki, uh, it's rough when you're sick, but less sick than everyone else, so you have to take care of everybody. Uh, Sylvia, Bruce, are you going to try to sail this year? We, we don't know, Sylvia. We just don't know because uh, Canada, we're still in lockdown here. I can't even drive to Calgary within the country. I can't even you know, go 500 miles right now. They're telling us, do not leave your health region. They're trying to really contain this and bring this thing down. We're waiting for our second shot. So Jen and I don't want to leave town until we get our second shot. We want many others to get their second shot, and we want to see these numbers plummet everywhere in Canada. Then we know we can at least travel within this region. The hope we have is going forward into July that the U.S.-Canada border reopens and that we can now travel into the USA, by, at least by car for the day, go to Coeur d'Alene and back and hit our favorite Costco store for some stuff. We'll wait for that. Uh, then we hope that from there, um, you know, things really calm down with the U.S. counts dropping dramatically, as they have been already, and the Canadian counts dropping. Then we want to hear from the government of Canada say, okay, if you're taking a flight to the U.S. or you're driving to the U.S. and driving back, you don't have to go into a quarantine situation anymore. If you've been vaccinated, you're good to go. I'm hoping that, you know, things open up. That being done, then we will see if there's any kind of a cruise in our future. But my gut tells me that I can't see us doing a cruise before the end of this year. I, I just don't think so. There won't be enough cruise ships running yet because they're coming on. I know that that uh, Norwegian is talking up to another five to nine months to get all their ships going again. We're talking next February. So it might be January, February, March of next year that we might be on a cruise. I'm hoping we can decide in a few months from now to start looking at these, but there may not be any availability. We just don't know. Uh, and so um, it's just too early to answer this question. I wish I could answer it, though. I'm telling you, I want to know. 61 thumbs ups. We've got 39 to go to hit 100. Guys, help help me get to 100 thumbs ups. If you could kindly hit the thumbs up button. If you're watching right now, let's nail that thing and get those last 39 out of the way. That would be beautiful, everybody. Thank you. Edward, uh, Group Cruise, uh, 5222 Celebrity Reflection from Rome. Great itinerary. Take a look. Kevin Chapman, hey, Bruce, tell, you, uh, tell Jen I've drafted the first 15 chapters of Perilous Gambit, Mike Stolman, Thriller number five. The gang goes to Vegas in January of 2020. Right on, man. That is awesome. Sylvia, nautical nurse says, I don't think they had stabilizers back in the 90s. I don't think so either. Not like now. Uh, Tim, 77 Fahrenheit in Seattle. More hotter weather to come for the next few days. Nautical nurse, I believe it. Uh, Sylvia, those huge vessels gave a smooth ride now. Arc Adventures, ah, yay. Our Blues blew their first round playoffs. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. Again, four and out, four and out. Unfortunately, yeah, they are up again. Were you up against the Avalanche? Yikes! Um, the the Avalanche look pretty comfortable against Vegas right now too. Unbelievable. Uh, 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 Sharon, seventy thumbs ups, thirty to go for Bruce. Gary uh, Brooksford, welcome Gary to the show. I'm glad you're here. Let me know if you want to tell me the worst cruise you've ever been on for weather, high seas, and anything else. You want to share those with us? I'd love to hear it. Now, some news on the cruise front today. Not a lot, but what I'm hearing and reading about is that Norwegian is announcing, the story goes, that Norwegian needs to hire 17,500 more cruise members going forward to get their ships crewed up. Now, that tells me, I don't think that's the entire line. I think that's just for the next three to six months, they need at least 17,500 crew. And the logistics of getting that many people to your ships uh, through all the health uh, stuff you've got to go through, it's expensive, it is tedious, time-consuming, and it's not easy because you're talking about getting crew members from third-world countries into first-world countries over to the U.S., perhaps, onto ships. This is not easily done, and it is going to be incredibly difficult, but it's the job that Norwegian has got to work with. I can imagine that. You just think about this, folks. When you go on a cruise... What's the one thing you're also counting on on a cruise? One of the things you're looking for is the nightly entertainment. And if you're going to have a piano player in the piano bar, that's one thing. You got to get a, a healthy piano player on the ship. Could be an American citizen. It could be a European citizen, fully vaccinated, not a big problem. You can get them to a cruise ship for an American departure. But you want to bring on uh, 20 performers 
uh, to perform um, uh, nightly shows uh, on a cruise ship uh, with three costume changes per night. And you're talking 15 to 20 costumes for the entire seven day trip. And you're talking about different dance routines and song routines every night. These folks, they haven't performed in over a year and a bit. It's been a year and three months. It'll be a year and a half by the time some of these folks are on a ship again. And longer, these guys have got to go to rehearsals. They have to go to their to the Norwegian or the Princess Cruise Line or whichever cruise line's practice facilities, uh, be fully inoculated first and everything else, test negative all the time, do all their, uh, their uh, choreographies, get fitted for all their costumes, and then get sent to their ships to be performing. This logistic is unbelievably complicated at the best of times, let alone starting up the entire cruise line with all of your ships. We're talking about Norwegian starting to fire up 17 of their cruise ships, Oceania, for example, six of theirs, and the Regent with five of theirs. You're talking 28 cruise ships with 28 crews, 28 per sets of performers, uh, the musicians, uh, all the logistics. I mean, it's just it's just unbelievable. And of course, you have on each ship the sous chefs, the regular chefs, the servers, the hotel staff, the casino staff, the crews themselves, the uh, the uh, you know all the other people on board the ship i mean the doctors the nurses with enhanced protocols this is very expensive and very complicated to get set up and it doesn't happen like that it's going to take a while norwegian is talking about october to, to february 2022 before all their ships are sailing again assuming that there is not going to be a new surge of viruses variants that could catch us all off guard the hope is that the opening is smooth and stays that way, that passengers don't get ill en masse on cruise ships, that the viruses and the, va the vaccines that we've had on our arms are effective for the next year and beyond. There's a lot of ifs, ifs, and what ifs. And uh, I'll tell you, the insurance companies are probably writing policies like you can't believe for these cruise lines with unbelievable premiums for potential losses and cancellations and everything else. So. Guys, there's a lot to think about here. Uh, Spain is opening up. Uh, Spain is reopening to cruise ships. The official date is June the 7th. That is uh, next week. Spain is going to allow cruise ships with passengers to start sailing again. I believe that you have to be fully vaccinated, though, to do it on both sides, the crew and the passengers. And then the uh, governor of Florida, is it Ron DeSantis? Uh, this guy... Um, uh, he was defying every logic there was known to mankind by insisting that he signed a bill through his legislature that said that no business of any kind has the right to ask anyone coming to their business whether or not they've been vaccinated or not, and you can't deny them service. They signed that into state law. Asinine beyond asinine, but you know, what are you gonna do? In the meantime, that included the cruise lines. And the cruise lines have been told by the CDC, you're not sailing out of any US port unless your crew and your passengers have been fully vaccinated. Now, how's a cruise line supposed to verify if their passengers have been vaccinated if at the same time the governor of California and his peeps over in the in in, in Tallahassee make a law making it illegal for the cruise lines to find out if you've been uh, vaccinated i mean where's the logic in that absolutely ridiculous apparently he is now reconsidering giving the cruise lines an exemption i mean i don't know how this stands up in court i don't know how it stands up in the in the law of common sense but then again this guy, DeSantis, is a creature of his own making, and uh, he wouldn't last a New York minute in this country. This guy wouldn't last as a parking official up here. But in Florida, <laughs> for whatever reason, the majority vote him in. I don't, I don't know. It's kooky. Uh, what can I say? I hate politics, so I just hate it. But, oh, some of this crazy stuff. Ark, 73 thumbs ups, including us. Thank you. Yay, the Avs really took it to the Blues. Not the, yeah, they took it. Not the same Stanley Cup uh, Blues of 19, that's for sure. 
they're not the same anymore. No, it's been two years and things have changed. Yeah, um, KJ, Jamie, NCL offering triple rewards points for past guests. I'm booking left and right all the way up to 2023, right on. Sharing bad weather in a different way on our Alaska cruise in July in 16, it was freezing. We had to buy a coat on board. Back home, it was 100 degrees and I was jealous of my neighbors. <laughs> Uh, Scott, those Alaska cruises this summer are pretty pricey compared to 19 and 22 at better prices. Yeah, 19, they were cheap. 2022 is a bit better, but this year, unbelievably expensive. Gary was on the Caribbean Princess right before C-19 that had outbreak of norovirus, shortened and missed the ports. Tim Bowman, for a crew member's perspective uh, on what it's like to bring a, a cruise ship back to life, life Look up Riley uh, Tench on YouTube. His biggest issue was the inability to get off the ship during his contract. Yeah, he can't even get off. Sharon, 79 thumbs ups. Uh, uh oh, 2 0, Montreal. 79 thumbs ups, only 21 to go. Sharon, Montreal, 2 Toronto, nothing. Uh oh. Uh, Sylvia, 1990, the cruise ship was Chandra's Fantasy Cruise Lines, then switched names to Celebrity Cruises. Shan Chandra's, uh, the former name that is no longer around. Isn't that something? Chandris. Yeah, well, there you have it. The news of the day, uh, Norwegian, they're looking to hire 17,500 people, but they won't be up and running fully until at least February of 2022. So, you know, March, April, and May will be the first time that the entire fleets are operating, and hopefully all fleets around the world are operating. But between now and then, and beyond that time, all these cruise credits, these at least 15 to 20 million cruises that have got to be honored by the cruise line, it's going to take them two years to get all of those cruise credits eaten up. It's going to be a long, long time. So the idea of a group cruise for this channel, I think we're 2023, uh, really, uh, maybe late 2022, but probably 2023. We will keep an eye on and we will keep an open mind about it. I suspect that Jennifer and I will be on a cruise before we do a group cruise, only because we can't book a group cruise. Uh, but when we are on a ship, when we know we're going on a cruise, we'll let all of you in on it. And if you guys want to join us as individual passengers on a on that happen, a particular cruise, that would be fantastic. But the so-called group cruise where we gang up and grab a bunch of cabins and take over, that's going to be a while before the cruise lines can actually offer us that much space. So we'll see what happens. Art, yeah, we may move to Florida permanently in hopes of turning the tide and getting a normal governor. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, help vote this guy out into something else. I'll tell you, I, I just, I'm just amazed at um, the stunts these guys are pulling in Florida and uh, the stunts that are being pulled in Georgia and Texas and everything else. But, I'm not American. I'm a Canadian. And you know what? We got we got goofballs up here, too. So uh, we have our own variety of politicians. And uh, what, what can I say? Sometimes we, we shake our heads. And we can't believe that some of these guys get reelected. We can't believe it up here. In Canada, guys get reelected. We thought for sure would be kicked out the first time. But it's goofy. It's just goofy. Darlene, June 1980, a ferry from Vancouver to Victoria. I had to stand outside with the wind in my face so I wouldn't barf. I was literally turning green. I was on a uh, ferry ride across the English Channel from uh, from Dover to Calais, and halfway across that, it got rocky too. What we ended up doing, though, was we ended up sitting in the middle of the ship where the rest of the ship was doing all the moving, and we were kind of in the middle, and I survived that by that much. Just that much. I did have to go outside for a little bit and get some fresh air. But on the, about three quarters of the way across, it just became glass. It was absolutely smooth again. It was amazing. The weather up there and the systems and the currents and everything else, it's and just... When you told us the story, how that was our hardest customs crossing. <laughs> well, not the Calais part, but yeah. the back to the part. I have mentioned this where we got off the ship in Calais, the ferry, <laughs> and we were on foot. Uh, Jennifer and I and our daughter, we, we, we were just doing a day visit into Calais, France. And uh, we were on foot. Walked on the ship, walked off the ship. So we were following other people on foot to get off the ferry. And I've never been to Calais, France before. I've never taken this ferry before. I'm just following the folks in front of us because I'm figuring these guys know what they're going. And they looked like they knew where they were going. So we were walking and we come out of the ferry 
off the ship into the ferry building, and I'm figuring we're coming to the customs area somewhere. No customs area. No customs area. We just walked right out. We're out in the street. And there was a bus to downtown Calais, and we took that. And as a matter of fact, we took a bus to the local shopping mall, what they call the hypermarket, the big shopping mall. And we went to this hypermarket. We hung out there for the day. And then we get late in the evening, we got back, and we got back on the ship. No customs get on the ship, just walked on the ship. And we get to uh, Dover. And it's about, oh, 10 at night, Dover time. And uh, dark. Oh, it wasn't that dark. It was maybe about 8 o'clock, but it was pitch dark, black, dark. Out. Anyway, we, we, we walk with the people off the ferry in Dover, a different group, of course. And uh, we're walking through the terminal. We come to the border area. There's, there's the customs guy. So we figure, well, I guess we just clear customs here. You know, we don't clear it in the, U- in the UK. I guess it's all part of the European Union, I guess. We get to the uh, customs and we hand him our passport. And the, the officer's looking at the passport. He says, when did you, um, you know, w- w- did you, um, how long were you in Calais? So oh, we were just there for the day. We left this morning from here, went to Calais for the day, and we came back. Just, you know, day trip. Well, where's your stamp for Calais? Where are your, where's your passport stamp that you entered Calais? I said, there was no customs there. He said, what? So, yeah, we, we walked off with 20 other people, and we just I just followed this group of people. We walked through the terminal, and there were no customs officers anyway. There, there was no gate. There was no waiting area. It was just we went through these doors, and we were outside. We grabbed, grabbed the bus and went to the hypermarket, and then, you know, tonight we came back. You're the first customs guys we've seen all day. And these, these, these three or four customs guys were looking at each other and going, those damn French. <laughs> So he says to us, well, how long are you uh, going to be in the UK for? He said, well, we leave, uh, we leave for Canada. We fly out. Uh, I think it was day after tomorrow. We got like 48 hours and we're flying out. He says, okay, all right. So he stamps us in and he says, uh, you're good to go. We had to fill out some kind of a form, but it was no big deal. He said, fill this out. You're okay. But if we had been there for longer, we would have gone through all kinds of headaches uh, because of how we entered the country and exited the country. What a nightmare. But the French screwed up. What can I tell you? There's nobody there. How am I to know I'm supposed to find a French customs guy? Like, I'm supposed to know this? I'm just a passenger, man. What do I know? We had no baggage when we came on, too. We, they, there was nothing for them to check. They knew we were telling the truth because we just had our windbreakers on, our winter coats on, and, you know, mittens and hats and we had a hotel our hotels over there with all our stuff in it you know so they knew they, they're telling the truth all right they were day they were day visiting over there for sure because they're coming in here with nothing <laughs> and i don't know if we had our air tickets with us i'm not sure if we did i might have i might have had them with me and i could have shown them the air tickets that they could look at oh yeah you're flying out of heathrow day after tomorrow you arrived uh, five weeks ago yeah yeah okay they found the entry stamp where we came into the UK from five weeks ago. They figured that out. So, you know, everything adds up except the stupid French. And they talked to the child. Well, I, when they talked to our daughter and they asked her trick questions and she answered them perfectly. And, <laughs> and she's looking at them going, yeah, we just, like, we just walked out. We have no luggage, you know. Oh, it was crazy. And Nikki, Arc Adventures, come on down. Help turn these red eyes blue. Arc, um, Nikki, that's our goal at the year end. Um, uh, Mehran, uh, MSC Virtuoso is sailing regular cruises from Southampton even now, and single cabins charged the same as double. Uh, uh, share, uh, oh, my gosh, Sylvia. Jennifer sounds so nice. She should come and wave us, wave at us laughing out loud. Well, she's crocheting over there at the couch. She's relaxing. She's watching the hockey game, wondering what's going on with Toronto. Making mittens. Making mittens. Uh, DeSantis is, is up Trump's rump trying to bid for Trump's supporters if Trump doesn't run for president in 2024. Uh, sharing two nothing much all after two periods, but Toronto will start the third period on a power play. Uh, Arc Pete, you may have, you may be right. Trump Jr. Maybe Arc um, in 07, Andrea hit did a three hour ferry in Ireland, and the stabilizations stabilizers went out on the ferry. It was the worst ever. Took most of us down and out. Uh, sharing 90 thumbs ups, only 10 to go. Thank you, everybody. Arc, by the way, Bruce, tell tell Jen she did an incredible job on the Friends reunion show the other night. She's, she thanks you. She, she, she's resting now. She's tired. Uh, uh, Art convention laughing out loud. That's funny. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> she does what she can. You know, we, 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 we're we hanging out. You know, we were out the other night. Uh, we were out the other day and enjoying the area here. And a couple of photos were taken of us while we were out and about. There we are right there. You know, we were 
we were we were on the way to the grocery store and Jen wanted to wear something casual to go grocery shopping. And she said, why don't you wear something casual? So I put on a casual suit and she put on a casual little thing there. You know, she grabbed her shopping list inside that purse. That's where she keeps her phone, you know. And so we were able to go up and down the aisles and, you know, sign a few autographs, a couple selfies with people. And it was all fine. It's all it's all a good time. It's, it's all just a good time. You know, Crescent is a wonderful place. You know, the people leave you alone, you know. And, you know, from time to time, we'll, we'll go out for, like, we'll go out to the subway, you know, or to Timmy's. We'll go out and get a coffee, you know. We'll, I'll, I'll get really casual. I'll just wear, you know, like an open neck uh, shirt, you know. Jen, she'll put on something to keep cool because she gets warm, you know. You know, you, you know how it is. She likes to keep nice and cool. And, you know, once in a while, we'll, you know, we meet friends and people recognize. I go, hey, how you guys doing? Nice to see you. Hey, how's it going? Oh, we have a good time. You know, it, it's just life in Creston. It's just another day in Creston, nothing big. And we're having a good time. Uh, 98 thumbs ups we got now. We only need two more for 100. Thank you, everybody. Scott, I have my first post-pandemic cruise book for October this year out of Long Beach, Mexico. Here I come. Mexico, here I come. And uh, Mexico has some of the most lax entry requirements right now. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, Ark, um, uh, all right, Bruce, next time you send a postcard, can it be Jen's, Jen's autograph the next time you guys do a, po a postcard thing? I'll have to ask her. I don't know if she's... Uh, we might have to charge fifty dollars a postcard because mine are only ten. You know that autograph. You know that's a collector's item. I mean, think about it. Jen from Creston, British Columbia. I mean, how many times can you get an autograph from Creston? With it, Tim. Uh, our worst weather was two years ago when we did a loop around Japan and out ran a typhoon until we reached Yokohama. Then we spent a day anchored in the harbor, and harbor until the storm passed. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> out running a typhoon Yay! <laughs> oh man unbelievable well, i know the cruise ships in the caribbean they avoid the hurricanes they just bug out go 300 miles out of the way let it pass and then come in behind it and uh, stay well away from that edward fireworks have started in the neighborhood here in charlotte uh memorial day fireworks is that a thing i guess you've got nothing better to do i suppose it is why not uh, you know have a good time with the fireworks everybody thank you for these thumbs ups today uh i hope we've hit 100 of them that would be great yeah, share it. 101 thumbs ups we did it thank you everybody for helping me out getting us to triple digits on the thumbs ups count for this show on this channel that is a feat for only 109 people that is fantastic support i thank you all so so much i hope you have a great week this week a short week for those of you in america and those of you who love to watch me on my other channel, Stock Markets with Bruce, will be on the air tomorrow morning, 8.30 Eastern Time, one hour before we open up for the markets. I'll be on three hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, one hour before the close. And we'll see how the markets do for us. On this channel right here, I'll be back on Friday afternoon or Friday evening at 7 o'clock for a sponsor member hangout show and live trivia. So if you want to play some trivia with us, I dare you to join us. Uh, we have a good time. And uh, uh, 7 o'clock Friday night. You're welcome to come on in. We have a good time. Thank you, all of you tonight, for being here with me today. Saying hi to Jen, myself. We appreciate it. And we're going to say our good nights now. We got dinner. We got some dinner coming up. And uh, grab, yeah, it smells wonderful. What what's it? What is it again? It's uh, Parmesan-coated uh, chicken breast. Parmesan-coated chicken breast with, like, some garlic? There's garlic. So what you do is you take a nice, healthy chicken breast, and you cover it in oil and cheese. <laughs> How can that go wrong? How can you go wrong with that? You cover it in oil and cheese. <laughs> right there, that's a winner, winner. Without even cooking it, you're a winner. Yeah. And to put it in the oven, it's, the house is just, the odors, oh, it's wonderful. Uh, Sylvia, Edward, same here in Greensboro. Uh, Ark, oh, and Bruce, if you need anything to watch with dinner, we just released a vlog of our day at bush gardens today beautiful job guys well done jeff g i discovered there's a timmy's 50 minutes away what's your recommendation for tim hortons well i love a i love a large coffee with double cream and a sweetener that's my coffee your coffee your choice and then i like to get a, a like an apple fritter they have an apple fritter if they don't have an apple fritter get a boston cream donut if they don't have a boston cream donut donut get a honey curler those are my favorites jennifer loves a double chocolate donut that's a chocolate donut with chocolate glaze on top double chocolate donut and uh, what else will you eat at timmy's that's like a dessert type of thing what else do you like um, cookies you like she likes chocolate chip cookies chocolate chip. I'll have a, um, 
Once She'll, have a, She'll have a fritter once in a while. They're big for her, but they're just perfect for me. If I'm crazy, I'll have a maple long john. She'll have a maple long john if she's crazy. Okay. She'll have a maple long john. Yeah, that's the, that's the long donut with the cream in the middle. No. no nothing it's in the middle? Donut, but it's dipped in the maple. It, it's dipped in the maple. And a, I've had a long john, which, of course, is the, the long donut with the cream filling then the chocolate layer on top. I haven't had that in a long time, though. I really enjoy the apple fritter. For some reason, I just like the cinnamon and the apple and the, the way the texture goes with the hot coffee. Fantastic. But that's just me. Uh, check it out. Have a great night, Bruce Charon. Thank you so much, Pete. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Pete. Kirk, great show, Bruce. Sylvia, good night, Bruce and Jennifer. Ark, ah, cheese and chicken. Yeah, Tim, we had a mac and cheese along with four bean salad and a watermelon. Nice. Edward, winner, winner, chicken dinner, Jen. That's right. That's right. We're going to enjoy that. Folks, have a wonderful evening. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you tomorrow, those of you watching me on the other channel. Otherwise, we'll see you Friday right here for sponsor members. We're doing trivia, and we're getting ready to have some more fun. Guys, take care. All the best to you. We'll see you later. Bye from now. Bye for now.